Hey guys, it's David Miller, talking to you from my studio at Primordial Creative in Tempe, Arizona. I'm a multimedia artist. I do a lot of stuff. I do photography, animation, filmmaking, teaching. One thing I have been doing at night a lot is drawing with Adobe Illustrator. And I have two young children. They are ages nine and 10. They are really into the Bruce Tim DC animated universe and other DC shows like Brave and the Bold, but specifically Justice League, Batman Beyond, Batman the Animated Series, and the Superman show. I love those shows myself. I've watched them many times over, even though I'm 40 years old now. They never get old. They're great storytelling. They're great character design. I love that stuff. And so one thing I've been doing while I've been watching these shows with my kids every single night is I have been trying to draw some of those characters and a lot of them I am either designing out of my own memory which is faulty or I'm kind of basing them on the Bruce Tim designs. So I'm going to show you some speed drawing I've been working on. We got Bane here. Bane is uh, not one of my favorite Batman villains. My understanding is it wasn't one of Bruce Tim's favorite Batman villains either. He's basically a luchadore and in that sense, it's kind of ridiculous that this is the guy that beat Batman. But you know what? A lot of those Batman villains that weren't the classic ones, whenever they're introduced, like um, Killer Croc is another example, they're always introduced as, oh, this is the baddest guy. This is the guy that's finally going to beat Batman. You know, Hush was the same way. I mean, what's so special about Hush today? He's just a guy with bandages on his face. You know, what is his superpower is he knows Bruce Wayne's identity. So, I mean, there's a lot of ridiculous Batman villains, uh, but I really enjoyed Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. I feel like Christopher Nolan did a cool version of him that had like a reason for being and wasn't just a South American wrestler that was on steroids. Did uh, Bane in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm gonna talk you through my speed drawing. Okay, so at this point, I'm really uh, refining the lines that I did. I did a quick contour sketch around my original pencil drawing. And as far as the mouth goes, I recall on Batman the Animated Series, um, the second iteration of Bane, I feel like he had a zipper for a mouth. So I'm going to try and go for something like that. I'll give him a stroke, and then I use distort to get his mouth uh, have kind of a zippery feel. You can treat Bane like a wrestler, or you can treat him like the urban terrorist that Christopher Nolan did, or you can treat him as kind of an SM type guy, which I think is a. I'm going through a little bit of all of those things. And uh, of course, this is all from memory, so whether I screw up Bane's actual design or not, I'm not really sure. But uh, in my memory, he has two of these little drug things, they, the things that transport the venom to him. I've seen him go to the back of his head sometimes. I've seen a single wire that goes to his arm, but I'm gonna give him two eventually. This is the gradient part, so I'm going to select the hex on him. I make a duplicate, I fill it with the gradient, I set the direction. Here I'm going to refine my really quick contour sketch of the feet make it look something like he's actually standing on the ground because right now one leg is higher and larger than the other and when you do contour sketching with the pencil and illustrator it's it's just a loose interpretation of what your real drawing style is like so I feel like I want to have the artist's hand in all these designs and all these illustrations. I don't want to see something that's entirely made of circles, of uh, other geometric shapes. I feel like that really removes what your actual hand can make when you do these things. But since you're working in Illustrator, it's good to have a blend of those. So in the case of his barbell, you know, it's perfectly fine to have geometric shapes. Uh, it's supposed to be a geometric object. For Bane himself, he's supposed to be an organic object and I want him largely organic. Now I'm doing the background and I'm gonna throw him on the beach because he's gonna be muscle man on the beach. Uh, these are just three flat shapes. We got the sky, we got the water, and we got the sand. 
I have to duplicate the sand because I want there to be a little bit of surf in between the water and the sand and it makes more sense to give a stroke to the sand itself and not the water. The water isn't uh, the thing that has the shoreline on it. Now we give him a shadow, just a simple blur and messing with the opacity. And the background looks really flat, so I'm going to not only give it the general landscape features like clouds and the sun, but uh, I think he's going to need some other things going on here. So I'm going to start off with these geometric shapes. I drew on top of the clouds, like my own drawing, so it's a blend of both the geometric shapes and my hand drawing. Duplicate, make a gradient, and then we give it a blur in the end. Gradient for the sky. Eventually, pretty much everything is going to get a gradient on top of it. I usually save this for last, though, because if you need to resize something and you've already got a gradient layer to it, uh, you have to resize both your original shape and your gradient, and it's a real pain. Now we're going to add some texture to the water and the sand. And I'm just going to use the textures that are within Illustrator. Um, it might be easier, make more sense in Photoshop to drop, you know, real water textures, real sand textures. But uh, just for fun in this one, I wanted to use stuff that was inherent within Illustrator. I like the artificialness of his environment. I like that it looks kind of like a diorama. And eventually I'm gonna throw another texture layer on everything in the background except for the cloud and the sun. Last bit we're gonna show here is the flare tool. Just to give it more life. And now we've got our final product. This was with about an hour's more worth of work. You can see I added to his Luchadori mask. I added effects to his venom things. I gave him a little crab pal, and I gave him a signature. There's a halftone layer, and then the clouds in the sun themselves have extra glows and a little bit of blur on the clouds. So I really tried to think about what each part needed to sell it as a realistic thing, but it, uh, this is kind of the style I'm preferring to work in right now, which is a blend of really organic drawing, a blend of geometric shapes, and some special effects like the glows and the flare tool. There you have it guys, hope you enjoyed that speed drawing. I'll try and put a bunch more of them up. I really enjoy drawing at night with my kids and I'm really enjoying Adobe Illustrator. I have a subscription to the, all the Adobe programs. Uh, it, get, it comes and goes what my favorite is. You know, I've done Photoshop for over 20 years, Lightroom for over 10 years, but um, taking the time out and get, digging deep in After Effects and digging deep in Character Animator and Illustrator it's really fun, it's a cool palette cleanser for me. And you know what, if you're a photographer and you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, I really encourage you to get into those other programs because it makes you a much more saleable artist. You will have many more skills and tools in your toolbox that will make you attractive to people who maybe don't value photography as much as they used to. Anyways, check out the rest of my YouTube channel. I got a lot of multimedia tutorials, I got a a lot of gear reviews and I got my own personal video art up there and also check out my patreon it's patreon.com backslash David Miller I will talk to you next time